you once again for tuning in to KSU Gold. This show is being brought to you by Kentucky State University's College of Agriculture, Food Science, and Sustainable Systems in partnership with the Frankfurt Kiwanis Club. My name is Lindsay McGaha. I'm a media manager at Kentucky State University, and I'm your host. And on this show, we give our viewers a peek of our faculty, our staff, and our students and their efforts to continue our golden legacy of achievement here at Kentucky State University. On today's show, we're going to be talking a little bit about summer camps. And that's super exciting because we have Dr. Travella Free here in the studio with us. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Yes, welcome to the show. And also, welcome to Kentucky State's family. Yes. <laughs> You're pretty new to Kentucky State. Tell us when you started and what you do. I am very new. Uh, my first day on the job was June the 1st of this year, 2017. So right now, I'm at about three weeks <laughs> in but I'm going to absolutely love. I love the staff here, and um, I think it's going to be an exciting opportunity for youth across the state. Well, welcome. Well, Tell us a little you. bit about the programs that you're starting here. Well, um, primarily my role here is pretty just to give leadership to the youth development program coming from Kentucky State University. And so, and with that leadership, I'm hoping to pull together the wonderful programs that we have here and share that with youth across the state. We've got an amazing, very talented extension professionals here at Kentucky State University, and I'm excited to work with them, and I'm excited to make a difference in the lives of youth across the state. Well, you work with 4-H as well. I do, that's and correct. And that's a pretty common term, but a lot of people don't know what 4-H stands for and why it's important. Well, 4-H has been around, around for a very long time, and so 4-H really promotes the development of youth into productive, self-directing, and contributing members to society. And so 4-H is kind of like the outreach arm of the Cooperative Extension Program at each land-grant university system, as well as the U.S. Department of Agriculture. So there are 4-H programs nationwide, and 4-H is taking place just about everywhere in our schools, after school programs, summer camps, um, just a lot of wonderful programs going on. And right now, there's about 8 million youth involved nationwide in the 4-H program. And then for Kentucky State alone, it's about 279,000 youth that participate in 4-H. And so 4-H has been around for a long time, but as you know, youth that participate in 4-H, they're twice as likely to do well in school, they're twice as likely to um, go to college, and 41% less likely to participate in risky behaviors. Well, sounds like a great program. He's got a lot going for it. What does 4-H stand for? Well, 4-H, if you look at the 4-H clover, it has four H's on it, and each letter stands for something. <laughs> and so that stands for hands, head, hands, health, and, um, and if you break heart. that down, and I heart, heart I think it's exactly. The last so it ties into the 4-H pledge. And so each year um, during 4-H events, youth come up, they stand up, and they recite the pledge for the 4-H. And so you think about the hands to clearer thinking, that's just encouraging our kids to look at their critical thinking skills, managing skills, and then you have the heart piece, which we want our youth to be caring and compassionate for others. And then you have the hands to service. You can't forget about that. 4-H um, is known for its citizenship programs, leadership programs, and service learning opportunities. So we want the youth to not only participate, but give back to their local communities. And then lastly is the health component. And as you know, the first three H's dealt with helping others. But we, of course, we want them to think about themselves as well. So the H really stands for health. We want them to make healthy lifestyle choices and build good character. Okay, what is Kentucky State's vision when it comes to 4-H? Well, we have some wonderful ideas and we're putting, putting together some dynamic programs here and I'm excited to be a part of that. But one of our goal is to just fall under the 4-H mission mandates and we're gonna target um, in the areas of STEM, which is science, technology, engineering and math, healthy living, that is your nutrition programs and physical education, and then last but not least, citizenship. We want our youth to give back and um, develop some great leadership skills. Now, many people may be wondering why we have a lady talking about 4-H when it comes to College of Agriculture. Right. The College of Agri <laughs> Agriculture show. Sure. But how do 4-H and Kentucky State's College of Agriculture go hand in hand? Well, this is a wonderful opportunity, and we have so many dynamic 
resources here, right here at this university. And I'm just going to throw out just a few. We have a, a university research farm, which is wonderful and exciting. We also have an environmental education center, so kids get to come out there and do some hands-on activities. We've got a STEM person that works with STEM. We've got the Rosenwald Center, which is the child care facility here on campus that is just state of the art, just wonderful. And we're hoping to take that knowledge right here on the university campus and share that across the state. So you just can't beat that. That's wonderful. In different counties, is that typically how the 4-H program works, is that you go to different counties around the state of Kentucky? Definitely. Pretty much on the state level, we are on the end that we're developing programs. We're the ones who do the research and then take that knowledge to the um, county agents, to the schools, to the communities, to the families across the state. So you're right on point with that. Well, what students typically benefit from the 4-H program? Well, all students can benefit from 4-H. And if you look at society today, you know, it's changing. Our, as we grow, society is becoming more diverse. And so when we think about youth development programs, we've got to think about how we're going to reach those audiences. And, I, and I'm not just talking about race or ethnicity, but there's language and there's disabilities. And so 4-H has to rethink how they do programming and think about how we're going to reach this new audience, this new wonderful diversity that's now um, being offered throughout society. And so that's the direction that we're going. Now, does 4-H still focus mostly on children or are there ways that adults can participate and help as well? Oh my gosh, we couldn't be anywhere without our volunteers. <laughs> <laughs> but 4-H, um, the age for 4-H is age five to 18. And so anybody can participate, but however, you can always volunteer and we're always looking for volunteer opportunities. You can volunteer as a 4-H club leader, you can volunteer to help with our summer programs, you can volunteer to teach and organize a 4-H club. It's always open. Just contact our office or contact their local county extension office. You have what you may call a plan of work mm -hmm. or I guess a plan of action for how sure. you plan to incorporate 4-H into our programs that we have. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, there's an old saying that says, if you don't know where you're going, any road will get you there. I like it. <laughs> and so you're going to have to develop a plan of action. Where are you going to go? So our goal is to go out. We're going to talk with families. We're going to talk with communities, talk with small farmers, and find out what their needs are. And then we come back here, and based on those needs, we develop a plan. How we're going to develop programs, what new curriculum we're going to develop, what programs we're going to expand to meet those needs. And that plan of work just give us those goals and those objectives, how we're going to evaluate our program, and how we're going to impact youth and families across the state. Well, sounds wonderful. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dr. Free, for being on. Best of wishes to you. I'm so Thank glad you. that you have come to Kentucky and to Kentucky State. We really appreciate all the work that you're doing. You all stay tuned. When we come back, we'll be hearing from three students that are a part of our summer apprenticeship program. Kentucky State University faculty and staff's research projects and programs have been awarded over $2 million worth of grants to further research in areas of science, math, agriculture, education, aquaculture, computer science, psychology, and sociology within this academic school year. My name is Jeremy Sandifer. I'm the STEM coordinator in the College of Agriculture here at Kentucky State University. So as a STEM project coordinator, um, I implement the summer apprenticeship program as part of three different grants. And the summer apprenticeship program at Kentucky State University is designed to reach out to traditionally underserved groups in STEM-based education, it's including computer science, agricultural sciences, behavioral sciences, uh, geographic sciences, we focus on those topic areas because of the, the need at the national level for em employees who are familiar with these kinds of terms and concepts. Um, math and science is at the root of the jobs that are being created and that are expected to be created in the future. And uh, essentially, that's, that's why we're, we're getting funded for these grants. We strive to create 
uh, unique opportunities for students to engage with one-on-one -on -one work with the mentors here at Kentucky State University. The mentor's job, first and foremost, is just to expose the student to some field of scientific study that they wouldn't have otherwise had a chance to participate in. Uh, aside from helping the student learn more about the, the specific career path that they're at, uh, they learn more about what it's like to uh, go through all the education aspects, to be able to reach that professional plateau, and then what the day-to-day -day job is like the apprenticeship program at Kentucky State University differs slightly from other 4-H based programs perhaps in the uniqueness of the opportunities that we create for the students in terms of getting to spend so much time with the mentors. Uh, the mentor-student relationship is perhaps the biggest feature of the summer apprenticeship program. Over the last three years, we've recruited students almost from every state in the country. Uh, this year, we have lots of students from Tennessee, Arkansas, Illinois, Georgia, Florida, and of course, from all over the state of Kentucky. I'm here with three ladies that are part of the Summer Apprenticeship Program. You all, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So tell me this, you all get to stay on campus. Is this your first time staying on a college campus? <laughs> yes. yes How's the experience been so far? It's been actually pretty good. It's so fun. Um, so, like, getting to stay on the campus, it really um, shows you what college is really going to be like. You know, waking up, having to go places, washing your clothes, eating in the cafeteria. So, yeah, it's very, it's a lot good exposure. Good. So, you all get mentors. Now, one of the things that's so important about this program that I think one of the reasons why they created it was because each student gets a mentor and you get to learn about a specific field of study. Tell me about your mentor and what you're learning. Okay, so I work with Dr. Kumar, um, Christy, and Cora Teets. Um, so, we are doing studies on tilapia. So, we make different fees. We have three different fees we have a regular commercial fee, we have a black soldier fly fee meal fee and then we have a black soldier fly plus the oil fee so we're comparing our expenditure experimental fees to the control fees to see if the growth is the same so like that and it's been pretty cool really have you learned anything so far yes i learned that nutrition is very important you know it's not all about just humans getting nutrition but it's also important for the animals to get the aquatic species to get nutrition too so that's pretty cool all right well tell me about you jakia um, I work with Dr. Webster and Marty, and our department is bees. So recently, I've been dissecting bees, but we learned a new method. Instead of checking for spores by dissecting and getting the meat good, we take about 20 bees, and we mush them up and pour the liquid into a bowl. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. That sounds exciting. It gets pretty stinky. <laughs> Does it? Yes. So have you dis dissected them before? Yes. Did you run into any trouble with those nails? I would think no. that would be kind of hard. That, it was actually, it was helpful, actually, because it wasn't, like, I wasn't as close to the bees, so that was good. And what about you, Deja? Well, I work with Professor Smith, um, Professor Browning, and Dr. Molino. There. And um, right now we're working on voice deception, and it's where we ask students whether or not um, a voice is male or female and we see if we can fool them or not basically hmm have you been able to fool anyone yes actually I did my part yesterday um, and based on the data we got back I fooled quite a few people which was very good Wow have you all ever done anything like this before no, no. <laughs> the first time do you think it would encourage you to kind of um, go into this field after, you know, after going to college or going into college, either way, or finding a degree in that field? Well, you know, I'll never say never. You know, I have things that I definitely want to do, but things do change. So I'm not going to say I'll never do this because it's very interesting. So, yeah, it's something to really look forward to. Yeah. Now, you all have gotten an opportunity to travel different places, too. Tell me about some of your traveling experiences. Um... Nothing is really around Frankfurt, so we really drive either 45 minutes, an hour, or two hours. The longest drive was to Mammoth Cave, and there was like two hours and ten minutes. So wow, yeah. how did you all enjoy Mammoth Cave? 
It, it was, wasn't what I expected, but it was fun. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it really? was freezing and it was bugs everywhere. But it was pretty cool though. Like I've never been underground so far. It's kind of scary. Yeah. <laughs> we went to Toyota. That was cool. How, make, seeing how they make the cars in different parts. So that was pretty interesting. We went to a garden. Canoeing. Canoeing mm, on yeah. the on the river. That was so much fun. Really? Oh yes. Did anybody oh, fall out of the canoe? <laughs> no. Thank you, God. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> space. You all can admit it here. Okay. Yeah. Well, no. Did anybody fall out? Her um person that she was canoeing mm-hmm. with tried to tip our boat over. Like, mm-mm. <laughs> gotcha. What have you all learned so much so far with the program? What's been the biggest takeaway of being a part of the, the summer apprenticeship program? Um, Set your alarm or you will true. sleep over. Really? Do you have to wake up really early every day? Yes. <laughs> How early is early? Like, we have to go to breakfast before all the other camps get there. So yes. we're working up 7 o'clock, but mm-hmm. we have to be in the library by 7. So more like 6.50. Like, it's just mm-hmm. ranges, but it's super early. It's I wake horrible. up at 6.15. <laughs> so. so time management is really important. Very important. Yes. Very important. So you say set your alarm clock early. What about you all? <laughs> I would say be open to try new mm-hmm. things, you know. Today we, I'm in aquaculture, but we went to the forum today and, you know, it, I didn't want to go, but it was actually pretty cool. So I would just say be open-minded because you never know what you're getting into. Has it changed your perception of bees? Yes, it has because, see, I'm terribly afraid of all insects, but (laughs) this, it gave me a bigger appreciation for bees. So that was fun. So have you seen mostly dead bees or have they been alive? I've actually been to the beehive out in the farm. So oh, wow. I put on a whole bee suit. Look, you braved it. Good job. <laughs> That's awesome. Has it changed your perspective of fish and tilapia? It actually has. It's more in depth. Like, it's more than I thought it would be. It's not just going out and fishing, but you know, it's taking care of the fish. It's their nutrition, it's their diet. So, yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely changed my perspective. Well, cool. Well, we're going to play a game. Who's excited about a game? Oh, God. <laughs> we are because you all have had the opportunity now to stay on a college campus, so you all have some experience. And we kind of want to know a little bit about your experience, okay? So this is what we're going to do. I'm going to ask you all a question. It's like a this or that. And you're going to write it down and tell me which one you prefer. You ready? No. No. <laughs> Uh-oh. Those nails are getting in the way, I see. Girl. Okay, there we go. Help her. I can't give her help. Help, help. We got it. Good job. All right, so (laughs) Facebook or Twitter? Don't you put a T? Yeah. Okay. Twitter. That works. Twitter. All right. All right, tablet or computer? Two Ts. Oh, wait. Just right one computer, one. two tablets. All right. Okay, this one's a hard one. Shopping online or shopping in store? Online. It's, it's definitely easy. I'm with you on that one. Yeah, in like the store. I'd like to try it on. No. Ladies, come on. <laughs> a blizzard or a frosty? Oh. <laughs> Big B. Frosty, all right. <laughs> college close to home or college far away? <laughs> far away. How far is far? Close to home. Close to home. Far away. My parents can just pop up. Man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Wedges or flats? Wedges, wedges, and flats. And then the last one, Kentucky State University or Kentucky State University? <laughs> You have one choice, KSU. All right, ladies, I love it. Thank you all so much for being on the show. We really appreciate it. I hope that everything goes well with you all in life as you leave Kentucky State, and hopefully we'll see you back. When we come back, we'll hear a little more about our 4-H summer program, and we'll hear from Jamal Jackson, our head men's basketball coach. Kentucky State is a great school to attend, especially because of the small class sizes. You get that one-on-one experience with your teachers. They're really caring and understanding and want to see you succeed. You also get in the field earlier. As a freshman, you're able to go out to the farms. You're able to do research projects. 
Kentucky State prepares you for a field in agriculture by the multiple resources that are available to you, the people that you get to meet, and all the cool things you get to do. Kentucky State University is among the top universities in the South according to recently released 2017 U.S. News and World Report College Rankings. Thank you all once again for tuning in to KSU Gold. As you can see, we're talking a little bit about summer programs here at KSU and specifically our 4-H programs. You heard from Dr. Travella Free earlier about four of our 4-H summer programs here on campus. They include PACES, the Summer Apprenticeship Program, the Summer Transportation Program, and also the Ag Discovery Program. The Summer Apprenticeship Program is a three-week residential program that allows students to work one-on-one -on -one with a mentor. Students work on projects in agriculture, environmental sciences, geoscience, and computer science. In Ag Discovery, it is a two-week residential program for students between the ages of 14 and 17 that are interested in careers in animal science and veterinary medicine. PACES, which is also known as Pathways and Access to Careers in Environmental Sciences, is a one-week residential program for students entering grades six through eight. Students in this program will use problem-based learning curriculums which foster critical and creative thinking in groups and individual projects. Kentucky State University has various summer camps on campus. Dance camps, also our 4-H camps, but we also have a basketball camp. Which brings me to our next guest, head coach Jamal Jackson. Welcome to the show. Thank you, how are you? I'm doing well. So, you're an alum of Kentucky State University. Tell us what year you graduated. I graduated from here in 2004. All right, so you're not you new to Kentucky State, but you are the new head basketball coach. Tell us about your first year here. Well, we did a, a good job of laying the foundation and the groundwork for where we wanted our program, program to go, uh, what kind of culture we wanted to, wanted to build. Actually, today marks a year anniversary that uh, I arrived last July, and um, you know, with our kind of abbreviated summer that we had, we, we uh, we had to do a rush job on uh, bringing in some talent as well as getting to know the players who were returning. Okay, so this is also your first year for summer camp then as well. Tell us a little bit about your summer camp that you have and what the students that participate in the program get to experience. Our basketball camp uh, ended last Thursday. It was Monday through Thursday, uh, day camp. Uh, maybe in the future we'll do a residential camp. But we uh, each morning we began with introducing our uh, our core uh, value or pillar for the day. And we talked about the core values that we have with our, with our players in our program, which are uh, selflessness, toughness, accountability, and commitment. And we talked to our, uh, our, our players about that, and we talked to the campers about that. Those are skills and uh, character traits that not only help you on the floor, but will help you throughout life. Then after we talk about that, we go into our stations where we were able to develop the uh, fundamental skills for each player, whether they're just beginning uh, with basketball for the first time, picking up a basketball, or, or they're highly skilled. So uh, it's always important to work on your fundamentals no matter how good you think you are. Then after we finish with the fundamental work, we were able to move to uh, games and contests. What age ranges do you typically have in your camp? Our camp was open to uh, boys and girls ages 17, 7 to 17. Okay. Are these usually players that have played basketball before, or are these typically students that have never picked up a basketball? Well, like I said, some kids who uh, were picking up a ball for the first time, their parents just wanted them to go to a camp at Kentucky State. We had some other players who, uh, you know, you could tell were very experienced and had been playing for a long time. But like I said, whatever, uh, you know, wherever they were talent-wise, you always can get better and work on those fundamental skills. And biggest thing we wanted to do for those kids who were just picking up a basketball for the first time was instill that love for the game so they keep coming back for more. How long does the summer program last? Our camp was uh, four, lasted four days this summer. Uh, in the future, depending on the, uh, the uh, amount of interest we, we receive, we may expand that. 
okay? Tell us a little bit about your upcoming year. Now, I know basketball season is getting ready to start. When does it start, and what is your expectation for this year's team? Well, our, our first uh, regular season game is November 11th. We travel to Salem International University in West Virginia. Our first home game is uh, Saturday, November 18th, where we welcome Malone University from Ohio. We have some very high expectations for our, our season next year. Uh, has some very good returning players who will be with us. Our point guard, Dorian Jordan, had a very strong year uh, this past season. Reggie Breeden, who also, he'll also be a senior. He, he was having a very good season before he tore his ACL in uh, mid-January. He, actually, he was coming off Player of the Week honors in the, uh, in the conference. And we also signed seven, seven newcomers this spring who will come in and, and do a lot for us. Now, are they all freshmen? They're all transfer students. Transfer students. All right. Well, thank you so much, Coach Jackson, for being on. Best of wishes to you all and all that you do. I want to encourage each and every one of you all to make sure you check out KSU Gold every Monday at 8 o'clock p.m. Until next time. <laughs>